Are you looking for ideas on how to include coding and computational thinking into your lessons in a simple yet motivating way? In this video, we will show how to program a questions and answers game with Scratch, a simple game that you can use with your students of any educational level and in every subject. Scratch is a visual programming language based on blocks that enables the development of all kinds of projects without having to memorize the complex syntax of traditional programming languages, since it allows the user to snap together and customize the blocks of instructions that control the behavior of the characters of our creations. Let's see first how the final result will look. To see it in action, we click on the green flag. A character appears and introduces the user to a challenge about European capitals. Next, different images are shown and we are asked questions about different European capitals. When we answer correctly, we get a point. Let's program it. The first thing we are going to do is go to the Events category, which contains the related blocks. Events are actions that provoke reactions on characters. We choose the first of them, when green flag clicked, which is the way in which the Scratch projects usually start running, by clicking on the green flag. Next, we're going to tell the character to change the background and put in a blank image. To do this, we use the Switch Backdrop to block in the Looks category. Now we have to make our character read us and explain to us that we are going to play this questions and answers game about European capitals. Perfect! Let's program the first question. The procedure for the questions will be as follows. We will change the background to show a photograph of the capital of the country for that particular question. And our character will ask what is the capital of the country. We chose the background of Madrid, for example. To make the character ask what is the name of the capital, we will use the Ask block of the Sensors category, and we write the corresponding question. The game asks a question and the player replies by writing the answer and pressing the Enter key. When the Enter key is pressed, the text entered by the user is saved in the Answer block. How does the program know if the answer is correct? For this, we need to make use of the block of the control category that is if else in combination with an equals operator that will be used to decide whether a condition is met. Thus, if the answer written by the user is correct, in this case if the answer is equal to Madrid, the user will get a congratulations message. What happens if the user wrote anything else? We'll have to tell that she made a mistake for what we use the else branch of the block indicating to the user, in this case, that the capital of Spain is Madrid. Our game is almost complete, but we are missing an important part of every game, the scoreboard. To be able to store data in Scratch projects, such as a scoreboard, we use variables. So, in the data category, we create a new variable that we call points. With the variables, we basically have to use two types of blocks. One block to assign their initial value, and another one to update their value. In our case, when the game starts, we want points to be zero. Therefore, after pressing the green flag, we will assign the variable points the value zero. When do we have to update that value? The moment a question is answered correctly. Consequently, after congratulating the user, we will update the value of the variable points and we will add one point. In this simple way, we can build our game of questions and answers. Adding new questions would be as easy as duplicating this part of the code, pasting it below, and modifying the question, the answer, and the background to be displayed. This version of the game is suitable for the first elementary grades. For older students in lower secondary or secondary schools, we could make use of message broadcasting to have a cleaner and more readable code. Instead of having all the code in a single program, with all the instructions one after the other, we could split the code in several programs so that each one of the questions would be executed when receiving a certain message. Messages are a type of events that allow, in an elegant and effective way, synchronize and coordinate the behavior of the characters of our projects. With even older and more experienced students, we could go a step further and make the game a little more complex so that the questions do not always come in the same order. For this, we could make use of lists operators such as the random number generator, and we could even create our own blocks. 
this activity generally works very well in the classroom because students, while learning to code and developing their computational thinking skills, are also practicing the subject of the lesson in an engaging way. And what's more, students can use the games created by their peers to review the content of the subject in the future. In fact, these types of programming activities have been used in different research that saw a very positive effect on the academic results of the participating students. I think you are more than ready now to participate in Code with, with your students. And don't forget to pin your activity to the map. Let's get Europe coding. Thank you.